Just when you thought that Trump only being on trial for his alleged 34 felony charges was bad enough, it became immediately apparent that he'd have an added problem to contend with. Because Trump decided to violate his gag order not once, not twice, but at least three times in the lead up to his first criminal trial in Manhattan, he'll now have to be present for what's called a show cause hearing next week, Tuesday, April 23rd, where Trump will have to convince the court as to why he shouldn't be held in contempt for those repeated gag order violations. And I'm sure he'll have a very cogent, reasonable, well thought out response prepared. I'm just kidding. He's going to spew some BS and get laughed at a court. And underscoring all of this is the fact that this is a recurring theme for Trump. This hush money case is just one of three cases where gag orders have been brought against Trump. New York Judge Arthur N. Goran also imposed a gag order during last year's civil fraud trial against the ex-president and his company, which ultimately resulted in Trump paying $15,000 in fines for violating the order. We don't have to pretend like his inability to comply with gag orders is some untested phenomenon. Frankly, what would be shocking here would be if he actually did manage to comply with the gag order. Let's talk punishment. There are two possible punishments that Trump could face. One is a money fine, which in the state of New York can be up to $1,000 per violation, and the other is up to 30 days of jail time for each violation. Obviously, a $1,000 fine per violation is the equivalent for Donald Trump of doing exactly nothing at all, but imprisonment is a different story. Of course, I don't want to delude myself or you into thinking that Trump is going to be hauled into jail right away, but the threat of jail can be used to deter Trump from any future violations. I had spoken with MSNBC legal analyst Glenn Kirshner about the judge allowing for money sanctions for these initial offenses with the threat of jail for any future violations. And here's what he had to say. Glenn, do you think we'll see some type of hybrid approach where maybe Judge Mershon imposes the fine, which is basically tantamount to nothing, but will serve as a warning and then say, if we see another violation, then I will avail myself of the opportunity to throw you in jail? Yeah, absolutely. It's like you've been in court before, Brian, because that's exactly what judges do. They do it incrementally. The first violation, they will ordinarily say, I'm giving you a warning. The second violation, they will say, you're fined $1,000. And let me put you on notice, defendant Trump. If you violate again, after this money fine has been imposed, you will be put in a jail cell. Do you understand? And Donald Trump will, you know, mumble that he understands, kind of like he mumbled through some of his answers today in court. Um, so judges love to do it incrementally. They like to give a defendant enough rope to sort of, I hate to use the phrase, hang himself, but um, because appellate courts like to see that kind of incremental approach where you're giving a defendant every opportunity to comply with a court order. And if a defendant just steadfastly continues to violate court orders, that is when they can find themselves in a jail cell. And lo and behold, that is exactly what prosecutors are seeking to do. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office filed their brief on Tuesday morning, April 16th, seeking the maximum financial sanction, $1,000 per violation, but that, quote, this court should warn defendant that future violations of the court's restrictions on his extrajudicial statements can be punished not only with additional fines, but also with a term of incarceration of up to 30 days. Now, there is some danger in this hearing being set, not immediately, but a week down the line. Because in effect, what it does is give Trump yet another week to continue committing these violations. And as we know, Trump will not stop until and unless he is punished. He will attack any witness, any juror, any attorney, any judge, any prosecutor, and he will only stop if he is faced with imminent punishment. That is how this guy works. And so giving him another week's worth of latitude is only going to further endanger more people in Trump's interminable PR battle against those seeking to hold him accountable for his crimes. And of course, Trump will stomp his feet and whine and complain, but he will always stomp his feet and whine and complain. That is what he does. This entire trial, he's presented himself as the victim in a case where he allegedly committed 34 felonies. He's not the victim, he's a criminal. And he knows that, but his whole shtick is to manipulate the roofs who are gullible enough to place their trust in him. And so what we're left with is screeds like this. My son has graduated from high school, and it looks like the judge will not let me go to the graduation of my son, who's worked very, very hard. Uh, he's a great student. He's very proud of the fact that he did so well. And I was looking forward for years to have graduation with his mother and father there, and it looks like the judge isn't going to allow me to escape this scam. It's a scam trial. If you read all of the legal pundits, all of the legal scholars today, there's not one that I see that said this is a case that should be brought or tried. 
It's a scam. It's a political witch hunt. It continues and it continues forever. And we're not going to be given a fair trial. It's a very, very sad thing. In addition, as you know, next Thursday, we're before the United States Supreme Court at a very big hearing on immunity. And this is something that we've been waiting for a long time. And the judge, of course, is not going to allow us. He's a very conflicted judge. And he's not going to allow us to go to that. He won't allow me to leave here for a half a day, go to D.C. and go before the United States Supreme Court because he thinks he's superior, I guess, to the Supreme Court. And we got a real problem with this judge. We have a real problem with a lot of things having to do with this trial, including the DA, because you go right outside and people are being mugged and killed all day long, and he's sitting here all day with about 10 or 12 prosecutors over nothing. Over nothing. Over what, over what people say, over what people say shouldn't be a trial. So I just want to thank you very much, but uh, that I can't go to my son's graduation or that I can't go to the United States Supreme Court, that I'm not in Georgia or Florida or North Carolina campaigning like I should be, it's perfect for the radical left Democrats. That's exactly what they want. This is about election interference. That's all it's about. Thank you very much. All right. Complaints about how he won't be able to go to his son's high school graduation and about how his case shouldn't have been brought in the first place and how it's all election interference. Donald Trump, the world's ultimate victim. Tell you what, for a party that beats its chest about being alphas, they sure do enjoy framing themselves as being helpless and aggrieved. I should note, too, that if Trump wants to go to his son's graduation, if he wants to be able to campaign, if he wants to stay out of the courtroom, then the answer is pretty simple. Don't commit crimes. And let's be clear, no one forced Trump to break the law. He is a big boy. He makes his own decisions. The law prohibiting campaign finance violations has been around for a long, long time, and Trump knew that law well, which is why he funneled the secret hush money payments through Michael Cohen, meaning this was all predictable. When you break the law, you should be prepared to answer for it. That's not Judge Mershon's fault. It's not Joe Biden's fault. And no, it's not even the Democrats' fault. It is his fault. And instead of whining because he isn't above the law, he might consider taking some responsibility for his own actions. Before you go, to see more content from MSNBC, make sure to subscribe to this channel by clicking the link right here on this screen. And you can also follow the link to see some exclusive content only on TikTok. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.